Hello and welcome to the Wendell Effect. My name is Brandon Wendell, Charter Market Technician. I'll be your host for this little webinar. And before we get started, just to remind everybody that Trading Mindset Association is not a broker, dealer, or investment advisor. None of us are. And we are just giving this information for educational purposes only, not telling you to buy, sell, or hold any particular securities or giving you any personalized recommendations about the markets. Also, there is always risk involved in the markets. We do what we can to try to minimize risk, but we can never eliminate it. And there is always a possibility of loss. Never trade or invest with any money that you cannot afford to lose. And Trading Mindset Association personnel are not subject to trading restrictions, so we could have a position in a security to initiate one at any time. So, welcome, welcome, welcome. Sorry my camera is not on today, but uh, you get the good information anyway. So, uh, if you want to keep in touch with us, please send us some emails at the Wendell Effect at TradingMindsetAssociation.com. You can also comment on the video and also please hit the subscribe and like buttons too, so we know you're there and like it. And we'll continue to produce more content for you as well in the future. You can also hit me up on Twitter at TraderBDub. And obviously, YouTube, you found us here. You can also find more videos on TradingMindsetAssociation.com, our website. So jumping right into it, the schedule for today, we're actually going to go into weekly market analysis as usual, looking at the equity index futures, moving on into energy futures, then sector analysis and some stock ideas. And I actually do have some new ideas as well as follow up on some of the ones we have posted previously. And we'll take a look at the Indian markets as well as some individual single uh, stock ideas in the Indian markets as well. So I've got that lined up for you today. And it's not showing on the schedule, but I also have a little bit of crypto that we'll take a look at right now as we've been experiencing what's been called the crypto winter. And we want to find out, is this done or are we still heading down? Well, starting it off for the week of July 4th and happy Independence Day in America for everyone who's watching. And we'll kick this off on the equity index futures, looking at the S&P on the weekly chart. We did talk about this possibility of a trend reversal. However, all we had was a positive divergence, which gave us that pullback that we experienced about two weeks ago. And then last week, we started pushing back down, not really ready to put in a new bottom yet, but we have not confirmed the reversal of the trend. In order to confirm a trend reversal, after the divergence, I've mentioned this before, we would have to put in a low where the RSI does not go below 40. So we haven't actually done anything like that yet. And it looks as though we may just be a little choppy sideways going forward for the week. You can see there was a bit of a trend reversal on the daily chart. So this is what I was referring to. You have that positive divergence, then followed by this low that was made where the RSI cannot get below 40. So that's suggesting that this week there might actually be some more bullish pressure coming into these markets, pushing prices upwards a little more. It might be retracing more than this 50% up towards 61.8 or even 78.6. The nearest daily supply is this, really. And we could make a test of that. You know, I would expect that it would be a little choppy this week overall, but we could see some backwards movement uh, up and down, backward, back and forth, basically. So going down to the four-hour chart, same picture. You can see we had the positive divergence, confirmation where a low was made without going below 40. So suggesting we might push a little bit higher and make a new high this week. You know, the high pre uh, for the month, well, not really for the month of June because we have these highs. We're not going to break those this week, but we should be able to break this. And maybe stall out at 37.70 or 39.70, so 4,000 to 4,100. So look for that. Pretty much same picture on the NASDAQ. We had the positive divergence, no confirmation of reversal yet. Going the daily, though, we did. Actually, this didn't put in an official low. You can see it did put in a low in price, but it did make a higher low on either side. So it's not confirmed as a low yet. Even though it is above 40, we still have to make the actual low for it to be a signal for a reversal of the trend. So right now, it's still just a warning sign. There's underlying bullish pressures coming into play, but it's not actually reversing the trend, not saying we're gonna be bullish yet. So keep an eye out. The NASDAQ's still a little weaker than the S&P. And even on the four hour, you can see that the lows that were put in here, still below 40. So again, not a reversal confirmation. We had one back here, positive divergence. There's a low, not below 40. You see, we shot up to some new highs and then started reversing again, making lower highs, lower lows, and going below 40. So on the four-hour chart of the NASDAQ, this is definitely a weaker index than the S&P was. So I'd be looking for more bearishness here than I would be on the S&P. So if you're looking at short, you may want to pick on the NASDAQ. 
Dow, pretty much the same picture, a little bit more bullish. You can see it did put in a little bit higher high here as we're trying to pull back. Not confirmed yet, but still looking somewhat bullish. On the daily chart, we also haven't made, actually, I take that back. That's on the wrong one. It should be on the previous candle. That's a lower low. And then we had higher lows and higher highs. So it is actually officially a, a reversal of the trend on the daily time frame, not the weekly, but the daily. So we're starting to see a lot more bullish pressure picking up in these markets here. Moving on, on the four hour chart, uh, couldn't quite make a new low, uh, staying above 40. So this is showing a little bit of underlying weakness than compared to what we saw before. We did break supply with lots of momentum as we try to reverse. You see the confirmation of reversal there. We end up making these new highs at breaking supply, but then we made a divergence. I don't have a mark, but you see higher highs in price, lower highs on the indicator leading to a drop. Even there's a peak where we're below 40 or 60, sorry, below 60 on the RSI. That's very bearish. And if we can't rally and break this supply zone again, really it's no longer valid because it's already been tested, but we got to make sure we have enough momentum to keep going up. We need to go above 60 if it's going to keep rising. Otherwise, expect this to fall this week and make new lows. And let's see, that was, what am I doing here? I'm trying to figure out, we got the weekly on the Dow, daily on the Dow, four hour on the Dow, and then it goes back to weekly. I must have had an extra one in there, but anyway, it doesn't matter. So looking at the daily of the Russell here, that's what it was. Yeah, did the instead of the weekly of the Russell, I did the daily. It's not a big deal, but it's the same picture for the most part. Positive divergence. And we put in a low right here above 40. So starting to see a little bit more bullish pressure for this week. And on the four hour chart, we do have an area of supply we may have to contend with at 1735. That would be the, the kind of the testing point to let us know if we're going to continue to go higher or end up dropping this week. So as we're coming into the 1735, should be on. Uh, well, I don't know if it happened last night on Sunday evening or if it's going to wait until Tuesday when the markets reopen. But if we can't get above 60, then we're likely to hold that area and push to the downside. So we'll keep an eye out. And actually here I went to the live chart. You can see on the four hour because I was kind of curious. And you can see that as the markets have opened, when our shortened trading period for the holiday, we pretty much did, did hold the supply. We're stalling shy of it and not getting enough momentum to break through. So that's showing a bit of weakness. If that's the case, when we pick up with the volume on Tuesday, when the markets reopen officially for normal trading, uh, we need to be able to break through 60 in order to get through that supply. Otherwise, expect a pullback and more weakness to come for the week. So moving on to the energy markets for this week, we'll take a look at that for the week of July 4th. Starting off on crude oil, we had a negative divergence led to a bit of a pullback. Tried to hold up, but are now seeing more selling pressure coming back in again on the weekly chart. On the daily chart, we are making lower highs and lower lows, and we're doing it uh, bearish mode. You know, we went a little below 40 right here as we dipped. We rallied, could not get above 60 as we came into a little bit of supply right here. So that's suggesting we're going to continue to push down on crude oil, which would be great for people, you know, having to feel the squeeze at the pump, so to speak. Going into the four hour chart, you can see that we had a, a little bit of supply coming up here as well as a Fibonacci retracement of about 50%. So all in that same area, suggesting we don't have enough momentum to continue higher. We should be able to turn down, maybe drop to the 103 all the way down to 99.85, possibly breaking that $100, which would be really nice. On that gas, we saw a pretty good size sell-off going on here. Coming down towards the weekly demand, 5.125. We'll see if that ends up holding. On the daily chart, you see we can divide that zone up into two smaller pieces, but it's pretty much the same area, 5.1. And we've got a lot of momentum, so it may just be a small bounce there before we continue to go lower. So I didn't check the seasonality to see if this is normally a bearish time for these securities. I could probably do that. All right, so I jumped over here to MRCI for the seasonal patterns, and you can see that in June through July, if you go over the last 30 years, they, the historical pattern is that this is extremely bearish until the end of July. So that's where we are right now, pushing down quite a bit. And it looks like that is likely to continue for a period of time. We go to the last five years. While it's not as bearish, it is still bearish altogether. You see that you got a little bit of a dip here. 
uh, peaking in uh, 11th of July, but then starting to drop again towards the end of July. So keep an eye out for that. It is pretty bearish this time of year. And if we get any bounces, they're likely to be, likely to be short-lived. We have a small bounce going on right here on the four-hour chart down around six. You can see we're actually pausing before we hit that. Often, if you go sideways before you hit a zone, you're building a momentum to break through the zone. We have plenty of bearish momentum, so that's a possibility instead of bouncing here that we just break through down to the 5.5. So watch for that. On the weekly chart of gasoline, boy, would that be nice if that drops more. We do have a weekly demand zone here, about three and a quarter, and all the way down to three, the whole number. You got rally-based rally. So as we dive into smaller time frames on the daily, you can see that we end up moving to a Fibonacci extension on our previous impulse down correction. We impulsed 61.8%. Unfortunately, though, we held above 40 on the RSI. So holding above 40 is actually bullish. So that's suggesting that we may have seen a bottom being put in, at least temporarily here at that 3.54 area or 3.51, I think it is. And we're getting a pretty deep pullback right now before we could potentially go lower, but not sure if there's gonna be the bottom right now. Going on the four hour time frame, you see that demand zone that we hit on the four hour 3.4. We've retraced 61.8%. That looks like a last ditch effort to the upside, failing to get above 60. So that's actually a positive for the bears here. Looks like we may end up reversing and pushing down to the 3.4 and possibly even all the way down to 3.0 if this trend continues. You know, our next target right there, 3.07. So I'm thinking that there may be, you know, this is the end of that retracement that we're getting ready to impulse back down once again. Even though we're getting a little bit of mixed signals from the higher time frame, short term, it looks like we might have some plays on the downside. So keep an eye out for that. Heating oil, finally, on the energies, we saw that we had those three indecisive candles with big topping tails, and that was bearish. Anytime you have topping tails, you're seeing that the sellers are pushing you away from being able to close at those highs. So that's a very bearish signal, period. Well, we end up falling through to the downside. So it basically did what it said it was going to do. And we pushed down with a retracement so far, about 23.6%. We kind of failed to reach the demand zone. We'll see if that continues to push down though. There's a little bit of a pullback from that low. As you can see, we got a bullish Rami where we've had this mother candle with the baby inside, engulfed inside, the body's inside although the wicks are sticking out a little. That's suggesting a small pullback. I don't have the RSI on here. I'd have to see what the momentum looks like, but this just looks like it's gonna be a small pullback before continuation down to the 3.58. Going down to the four hour chart, you can see we had that impulse correction. Now we may be impulsing again. And instead of, where was it, 3.58? We may have 3.78 as the first target before it goes down to the 3.58 area. So we have apparently may have been done pulling back. It looked like we're going to impulse down, not necessarily from anything else other than a Fibonacci retracement of about 61.8%. I forgot to put the retracement on there, but that's what it looks like it's doing. So we're going to go ahead and move on into the U.S. stock market and get an idea of what's going on, the hot stocks, hot sectors. Based on our sector rotation, we're still in kind of a corrective mode. You can see for the last week, uh, June 24th through July 1st, we had safe havens as our bullish sectors. I mean, obviously, we still have a little bit on the upside here on the energy markets, but overall, we saw utilities, staples, and healthcare being the only three markets that were positive when you take out the S&P 500. So that's a defensive play in the sector rotation. You take a look at the map for the last week, and you can see that, yep, healthcare had a little bit of green, had a lot of green in utilities, a little bit of energy and some defensive there's also a little pocket there in some of the real estate but not much and even aerospace and defense for whatever reason but overall the defensive sectors have been the most bullish so that's suggesting that we're not done with the bearish market that the investors and traders are becoming more and more scared about the market possibly pushing to the downside and continuing so moving along here what's happened there there we go xlp consumer staples when we looked at this before we had that big move to the upside and was worried, I was worried a little bit about a pullback for a, uh, from that supply zone at 73.28. And you can see we don't have enough momentum to break through that area after we had positive divergence. So looking at the XLP daily chart, we actually did bounce off that supply zone. So it was right. 
You can see last week on Tuesday, I think it was, we bounced off the supply pretty well. And we're making another run for it right now. But yet again, we're not getting enough momentum potentially to break through, although it is more momentum than we had previously. So we're getting a bit of a push higher trying to break through. But I think we might get stuck this week and then pull back before we can go higher. So I don't think we're quite ready to push upwards yet. So... If you take a look at consumer staples for this week, normally the 4th through the 14th, actually a little more than a week here, you can see it's been very, very bullish. As a matter of fact, 90% of the time over the last 10 years, we've had a bullish run with an average gain of about 1.5%. So you got to be a bit bullish on this sector, obviously, and it looks like we might be able to push through that supply zone, according to history as well. I use Seasonax. I mentioned this before. You can use this code right here. I know it's kind of long, but you got the triple W seasonax.com forward slash about question mark. I am R E F equals J R F 55 W. Anyway, if you use that, I uh, appreciate it. It's my code. Um, uh, bear with me for one moment. Checking something out here. Anyway, so we had three stocks. I know we had more last week. But we still have Procter Gamble, Walmart, but we've added in the Coca-Cola company now for high probability trade opportunities. So let's take a look at some of those. We have PG on a 60-minute chart last week, as you can see, and it's very, very bullish still. So it looks as though if we can get a pullback, we should look to buy. We didn't quite make it to our targets yet. 147 was the first target, 152 is the second. But if we can get a pullback to these new demand zones that were formed this week, we should be, or not this week, but previously, we're just waiting for that pullback still. Oops, that didn't pop up. There we go. Walmart was the other one. You can see that going back to last week, it was waiting for Walmart to pull back to 122.92. <clears throat> Excuse me, and this was on the 60-minute time frame. And hopefully you guys were paying attention to that because overall Walmart is still very bullish. From July 5th through the 14th, 93.33% of the time, it rallies. Look at that. So we're looking for that positive move to the upside here on Walmart still. And if you didn't uh, did take a look at that opportunity again uh, last week, you can see we did bounce off that demand zone the first touch. We made a new high. Unfortunately, we didn't quite get to the target, but if hopefully you moved your stops up because it would have stopped you out for a profit or at least a break even. Normally, once I get halfway to my first target, I move my stops up to break even, then start a trailing stop system. So Walmart initially did work. When it came back down, you can see the momentum was pretty bearish. We we're near 40, finally broke it and went through the zone. Overall, though, we're still very bullish for this week. So if we can find a short-term opportunity to get long, I'm going to look for that again. Oops, sorry. Went too fast there. But I don't see anything as of right now on this chart. We're just going to have to wait and see if something forms. But overall, it's been a very bullish week historically for Walmart, and you should look for that to continue to rise this week. Coca-Cola from five... Uh, July to 23rd of July, very bullish, 86.67% of the time, basically. 13 out of 15 times has rallied about 2% for these couple weeks. So keep an eye out for that. On Coca-Cola, we've had a pretty good run already. We have supply and a target about 65, 20, just waiting for a pullback. If we can buy on the pullback to 63, 64, put your stop maybe at 63, 38, 63, 37 just below that zone and look for it to rally up again. So that's what I'm watching in the Coca-Cola. See if we can get a pop to the upside, pun intended. Anyway, a little follow-up here on Costco. With Costco on the four-hour chart, uh, we were looking at this bullish move to the upside, waiting for a pullback to 464.38, and we were successful. So hopefully you're still in that position. As I mentioned, I put that out last week as a trade idea, and you can see the prices did come down to that four-hour demand zone at 464.38. Made that low, let you get in, and we have a negative divergence, so you want to make sure your stops are in place. Maybe move it up a little bit early, just protect yourself, because it might get a little pullback. It may even give you another chance to get long, honestly, if it comes back to demand. We barely tested it, so it could bounce from that area once again. We'll just have to wait and see. Also, we see healthcare was a positive sector for the last week, and we are going to continue potentially to see more rises in healthcare as it is also a defensive sector. As I mentioned before, those are the ones that are rallying right now. 
So looking at what happened previously with Abbott Laboratories, we're looking for that rally from 26th of June, basically to 21st of July. We're in that very bullish mode for this particular stock. On the 60 minute time frame, was waiting for a pullback to 107.74 and we got it. Now, depending on where your stop was, you may or may not have been stopped out. You can see it overshot that area of demand quite a bit, rallied up, retested again. Neither time did we ever go below 40. Even the third touch never went below 40 and finally broke out to some new highs. So we are halfway to our first target of 113.40. So make sure you move your stops up at this point and use some sort of a trailing stop system. It's up to you what you want to use. I tend to use uh, 8 and 13 exponential moving averages. And the reason why I use 2 is if I close below 1, I exit. If I simply break the larger one, then I get out as well. So that way I kind of have a fail safe in case I get a really large candle I want to wait for the close. So anyway, this is moving up nicely. You know, if I ever go out to the live chart, A, B, T, there we are. We're on a 60 minute time frame. Again, I can bring in those two moving averages. It was eight exponential. And then I actually need to change one of these. Oops, there we go. I'm pretty habitual, so I use the same colors. And there we go, 13. And you'll see, since I have two moving averages, I can either exit when it closes below the upper moving average or simply if we breach the lower moving average to get out. So your stop now could be somewhere around 109.07, locking in about a dollar and a quarter in profits no matter what. So that's something we want to do is protect our profits, but have a systematic way of doing it so you're not panicking and getting out too soon. Also, MDT on a follow-up here, waiting for a pullback last week at 11.02. Or, you know, you can wait for the pullback and instead of buying the expensive stock, you'd always sell bull put spreads, things like that. Or even uh, bull call spreads. But you can see, that unfortunately, this one was the entry, never pulled back. So that's why I was suggesting the options because right here, while we're waiting for this to pull back, we're not earning anything. And if it misses the entry, we don't earn anything, obviously. We never got in. But if you play an options position on this saying, you know what, as long as prices don't go below that zone, and we're in a bullish trend, so it shouldn't, you can get paid. You just have to know how to sell credit spreads and have the right options clearance. I think it's a level four in order to be able to do some of those, either three or four, depending on the broker. So if you're not familiar with those, maybe it's something you want to educate yourself on to give you some opportunities that you might not normally have. Another follow-up was Edwards Life Sciences. And on the 27th of June to the 19th of July, normally very, very bullish during this time of year. So I was waiting for a pullback. We had two zones here, 93.76, and then the one just below that 93.60, I think it is. So what happened was it did come back and let you in. Hit that 76 area, just a little inside of it. RSI was showing lots of bullish pressure still, so we were able to push. We have not yet made a new high yet, but we're still looking pretty good. So it should be fine continuing to move up towards that 105.70 target. Anyway, look at the financials. Also, we were looking for a bit of a pullback here. And the financials normally are not very bullish until near the bottom of the bull market, or bear market, excuse me. So we're a little bit early on this one, but you know, I was waiting for a little pullback and see what happened. Unfortunately, it never hit the entry. You can see it just missed the entry and moved up to the target, eventually breaking down without hitting target two, though. So never got that one, but that's okay. You can't have them all. Another follow-up on DFS, this was Discovery Financial Services waiting for a pullback to 93.88, and this was turning bullish. So what happened was it did come back, scared you a little bit, but never hit the stop, and now moving up quite nicely at this point, still showing lots of bullish pressure. So if you got in on Discovery, continue to stay long. Just make sure you move your stops as accordingly as you need to. All right, so we're going to take a look at utilities. As you can see, last week, a very, very bullish sector, which is a little unusual because utilities usually benefit from low interest rates, not rising interest rates. So it happens to be going to the upside right now. You can see seasonally, there's only one winner over the last 15 years for a 5 to 30 day trade period with an 85% win rate. We actually have 93% rate on Next, Ener Next Era Energy. So looking at Next Era Energy, this is what we're seeing right now. We do have a positive divergence with a higher low following, showing very bullish, not only going staying above 50, 40 even, 
but uh, also breaking 60 to the upside. So very, very bullish, higher lows, higher highs right now on the daily. So moving down to the four hour chart, we have two possible entries here. First one we're looking at the lower is 76.53, 75.27. Uh, obviously that's a further down entry, so not as high probability. The higher probability one is the upper one, 78.23, 77.05, but you'll notice it's not quite confirmed as a zone yet. So be very careful with that. Don't just blindly jump in. We need to make another new high on a candle following that because you've only got two. Uh, you got the leg out candle and you got one follow up candle. I need two follow up candles for a really good imbalance there. So we have to wait to see if we form on Tuesday morning another new high above that 8050 and then pull back to 7823. If not, if we just move down from here, then I would not enter until 7653. And place a stop maybe a 75 23 and then target as you can see here 85 18. so that's what i'm waiting on for me also wec energy group you can see 100 percent winners over the last uh what's that five years very bullish between the 9th of july and 10th of august so looking for a full month not ready to get in quite yet but very very bullish overall On the daily chart, we had a huge reversal off this low, and we're trying to become more bullish. We're finally above 60. We have a rally-based rally. Nothing overhead as far as good supply, although there is good selling pressure began around that 105 area. So dropping to the four-hour chart, we're going to kind of target that 105.50 area, but the entry is this rally-based rally on the four-hour, just under 100. So we may pull back under 100 to shake some people out before going higher, and that's what I'm waiting for. So we got those two targets based on Fibonacci extensions because there really aren't any uh, supply zones overhead to hold us down. CMS Energy is another one, same dates basically for the entry, the 9th of July. This one we're getting out a little sooner on the 27th of July, but it has 100% winners in the last five years. So pretty consistent here. Basically a very similar pattern. You see no supply overhead, There's no basing there. It's just leg and leg. This might be your first supply way up there, about 73. And we're gonna get out before that anyway. So you can see we have two zones yet again. We also have not finished this zone either. We need to have one more candle that makes a high above 68.99 in order to confirm this as a leg out with two new highs. If not, you gotta use the lower zone, 66.60, 66.08 with a stop maybe about 66.03, targeting 72.17. The Southern Company, another one with 100% winners from July 9th onwards to August 2nd. So looking at a very bullish move potentially coming up this week in the markets for some of these energy markets or utilities. And you can see the same picture here. We haven't quite finished this as a demand zone, so you got to wait for the new high before you can use the upper zone. Otherwise, use the lower one. And looking at the 60-minute chart, you can see, now well, maybe we use this instead. We have rally, base, 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 rally, and looking to get in about 71.55 with a stop at about 70.95, targeting 74.79. Oops. Anyway, that's it for the equity markets in the U.S. We're going to move over to India for the week of July 4th and see what's happening over there. So looking at the Indian weekly nifty, we can see we've been retracing a little bit after we had already moved down our measured move. We basically did a 61.8% extension of the previous impulse. Now correcting, it doesn't look like we're done yet with moving down. We've got a lot of momentum still making new lows here with price. So we're simply retracing, just not sure if it's gonna pull back 50% or if we're done. I don't think we're done potentially. I think we can go a little higher, maybe 50%, possibly 61.8 to close that gap. But it's a very it's gonna be a tough move up to get there. Going down to the daily chart, we do see bullish pressure finishing off the week last week. We're trying to stay above 40. We don't have a reversal signal per se, but we're seeing some bullish activity that could carry us up to 16,000 or towards that 16,178, basically trying to close that gap before we go lower. So that's what I'm expecting. It's a little bit of bullish movement to begin the week, push us up into those supply zones or retracement values before we go lower. So look at the nifty four hour, I think that was the yep, daily, oops, sorry. So now on the four hour, you can see, again, we got a little bit of bullish pressure at the end there trying to push us a bit higher 
and we're kind of stuck in limbo here not be, you know we're between 40 and 60 so no real strong momentum but we are coming off the lows to continuing to correct a little bit more so look for a little bit of push up before we collapse you know you take a look at the nifty and what's been influencing it the most obviously with the bigger market cap reliance tcs infosys there are huge influences on this index reliance being the biggest market cap and the biggest influence that's been holding it down but you can see there's a lot of green here in the last week this is based on the weekly returns for last week so reliance was keeping it from going too far to the upside but everything was kind of trying to rise and push prices up anyway looking at reliance there you can see there's that retracement that's been going on it looks like it wants to return moving down we haven't even retraced 23.6 percent yet so getting very very weak and look for that drop that'll take the nifty lower obviously on the four hour chart you can see reliance did do a nice retracement 50 percent of that previous impulse and now it looks like we're on a measured move so we're still just continuing down and it's going to keep the bearish pressure on the nifty so we'll prevent it from rising too quickly before it drops now if you're looking at some bullish opportunities as it is pulling back for the nifty we do have itc on a daily chart that just made a measured move as you can see to its second target on the impulses up waiting for this to pull back there might be some more buying opportunities we'll just have to wait and see but as we're stalling right now if it pulls back i would look for a possible long here 273.95 271.20 you have rally base base and rally coming out of that area so Extremely bullish, looks like it wants to continue a little bit higher, possibly the next Fibonacci extension, but it's got to pull back first. So if it does, I'm looking to buy there. Uh, we got Black Ash App, that's BL, Cash App, and Sun. Anyway, looking at that on the daily chart, this is actually one of my 889 opportunities, although we're not quite at the moving average right now to short, we are in an area of supply. We have here drop, base, base, and drop with good follow through right there. So looking for this to open up and continue to push to the downside, Possibly looking for a confirmation entry, selling as it breaks the 2055, putting the stop at about 2180, and then target number one would be the first Fibonacci extension, 1635. Second one would be lower, just or you just put in a trail stop and let it run. But this is a bearish trade opportunity I found. Another one, as far as a bearish opportunity, was Satin. So Satin Credit Care. Basically, again, looking at this move down, retracing back to both. The drop base 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 drop supply zone and the moving average, which will help work as a little bit of resistance. So if we move up to 10180, I'm going to put the stop about 107 or 10695, and then target the 8015 for the first target. Then let the winner run with the trail stop if you choose. Let's see, we got Pukarna. Pekarna, I'm not sure how to pronounce that, I apologize, but that is pulling back a little bit towards this area of supply. We have drop, base, 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 and drop. So we got 493 to 525.35. We might even meet up with the moving average, but that's still a little high there. So if we can pull back, looking to go short, target number one really has already been hit here, this uh, 419 area, and then target two would be 374 if it continues to go lower. So with the weakness and the nifty, these are some of the stocks that might lead us to the downside for a trade opportunity. Moving on to the nifty bank on the weekly, we are consolidating. We have a descending wedge that should eventually break down towards that 24809. It's just going to take a little bit of time here. I'm not going to necessarily jump in immediately on the breakdown. I would wait for a close below and then a retest before shorting. So we are seeing a bit of divergence now. You notice the lower lows in price, but higher low on the indicator. So that's a sign that this may try to push up towards the top of the descending triangle, giving you an opportunity to short up there, targeting the bottom again. So just be patient. We can see if that actually happens. Additionally, you see on the lower time frame, we're kind of bouncing and we are staying above 40. So this is suggesting we're going to continue moving up possibly retracing more than 100%, getting up to that downward uh, trend line. So that's kind of what I'm looking for for a short opportunity is a retest of that trend line, just waiting until it gets there. On the four-hour chart of the Bank Nifty, really nothing different there, just possibly you know continue to push higher. I don't really have any good entry spots. I suppose you could consider this to be rally, base, base, and well, that's a base too. So it's kind of a wide zone, not enough rally up there yet. So I wouldn't use that as a zone yet. But keep your eye out. There may be some more long opportunities on the smaller time frames. 
Let's see. Actually, we're going to keep going here. I said I was going to do a little bit of crypto. And, you know, we've had this crypto winter, so to speak, going on for quite some time. So take a look at the big one, Bitcoin, on the weekly chart. We have finally hit demand. So you think, oh, wow, it's done going down. No, it's not, unfortunately. So, yes, we did move down into the weekly demand zone. But, unfortunately, the momentum is extremely strong to the downside. And looks like it's going to continue. All right, so uh, again, you know, we might get a little bit of a bounce here, but I don't get too excited about this. I think it's going to continue to go lower. I don't think we've seen the bottom yet in cryptos, unfortunately, for you guys. Look on the daily chart, you see we're just going sideways and we are losing momentum, but that's not suggesting we're going to rally. That's just a loss of momentum for a sideways move before we possibly go lower. And we'll have to see how the momentum looks as we hit that demand zone at 16,343. If we have lower lows on the RSI, then I expect it to go lower. On the four hour chart, we're bouncing off a little bit of demand, just losing momentum again, going sideways. I would love to be able to short, but there's not fresh supply right now. Uh, so just gotta be patient and wait. But overall, do not try to buy the pick the bottoms right now because we're not here yet. Sorry, just don't see it. Same thing on Ethereum. Ethereum on the weekly chart, even that extension that we had on that one blip in 2021, we're coming down to retest that area of demand that you got about 715 to 550. We're not there yet. We're getting some weakness in the downtrend with the mixed color candles, but that's all it is, is a pause. You see on the daily chart, that sideways movement that's going on. So the longer you go sideways, the more likely you are to continue to push downwards and the more momentum you'll be picking up to break through demand. So keep an eye out 756 and 635 is a couple demand zones, but um, yeah, it still looks pretty bearish. On the four hour, we're sideways stuck between two zones. I'm waiting for the breakout basically below this 935 to take us to 649. But uh, yeah, I'm just not seeing anything that telling me to buy any kind of cryptos right now. So just got to wait. Anyway, those were the trade ideas I had for this week. I want to thank you for being here with me. And hang on a second, let me get back to a nice screen here. There we go. I can look at that instead. Uh, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and like button if you enjoyed the video. And if you have any suggestions, please, I want to hear them. I'm going to go ahead and do another live session hopefully next month with you guys. And I got some more interviews coming up, so keep an eye out for that. And lots of good stuff. So until next time, trade safe, trade well, everyone. Take care.